Feature flags, also called feature toggles, allow you to integrate, deploy and get feedback on your code even before it is fully complete. You have probably heard of Launch Darkly, Unlash and Flagsmith, but you don't need any of these to get started. So you could actually delete your feature branch right now and start delivering features faster using feature flags. Let's dive in. The simplest way to implement a feature flag is by defining a constant in code and using it in an if-else condition. Imagine you need to replace the JSON-based serialization in a service-to-service -service communication with a binary serialization to improve performance. Since this requires multiple changes across the code base, including some refactoring, you introduce a feature flag to preserve the existing behavior while enabling the new one only for yourself to test. This approach is simple and easy to use. All code is integrated in the main branch, allowing your team to see and consider your changes when working on their features or refactorings. At the same time, the CI-CD pipeline remains stable because the new feature isn't enabled by default. However, the simplicity of this approach comes with drawbacks. If you forget to toggle off the flag before committing, the new behavior could be enabled unintentionally. And of course, testing the new behavior elsewhere requires a code change and redeployment. To address these drawbacks, let's take this approach one step further. Let's assume you want to enable the new behavior for your team and in a dedicated CI pipeline to test for possible side effects. To do this, you need the ability to toggle the feature flag without requiring code changes. The simplest way to achieve this is by using an environment variable. Your team can set it on their local machines and you can enable it in specific CI CD builds to test the new behavior in a controlled environment. Resist the temptation to access the environment variable directly in multiple places in your code. Instead, encapsulate the check inside a function or even a dedicated class. But this approach also has drawbacks. You cannot control all environments, so a flag could accidentally remain enabled in some environments. To reduce this risk, always use feature-specific names for environment variables, like feature binary communication, instead of generic ones like early adapter and never reuse such environment variables across features. To avoid the risks of using environment variables, you can store feature flags in a configuration file instead. A simple approach is to load a dedicated configuration on demand inside the same class that previously encapsulated the environment variable. To optimize performance, cache the value for subsequent checks. If your software already uses configuration files, you can simply add a section there Read the flags at startup and inject them in your feature flags class. Application frameworks like ASP.NET Core often provide dedicated config files for different environments like development and production, making it easy to manage feature flags per deployment. By this point, we have already gained a lot of flexibility. We can enable feature flags for specific machines and activate them in dedicated environments like development, testing and production. But feature flags aren't just for technical migrations. We can use them to integrate feature enhancements or completely new features early and we can enable them selectively for early testers or during sprint demos to gather feedback. Another major benefit is that feature flags can serve as a safety switch. If we keep the flag in place, even after a feature is fully rolled out, we can disable the flag instantly if an issue is found late and roll back to the previous behavior without requiring code changes and redeployment. But we don't have to stop here. We can get even more flexibility by controlling feature flags dynamically after deployment. This allows us to enable a feature for a specific customer session, roll it out bit by bit in certain regions for A-B testing, or manage its availability based on regulatory requirements in different countries. To achieve this, we store feature flags in a database. Of course, this also requires changes in our design. Instead of a simple static class, we introduce a lifecycle component that manages database connections, caches flag states efficiently and integrates properly with dependency injection. We also provide a dedicated section in the admin UI where administrators can toggle features dynamically without needing to restart the application. Finally, if we don't want to reinvent the wheel, by building our own feature flag management infrastructure or if we need a scalable solution for a distributed system, we can use any of the various ready-made services. However, I strongly recommend against using these APIs directly in your features. Instead, you should introduce a small adapter to keep your application logic decoupled from vendor-specific APIs.
Now that we have seen how powerful feature flags are and how easy they are to use, let's talk about trade-offs. Feature flags increase cognitive complexity. Developers must be aware of both code paths, which makes code harder to understand. The more flags we use at the same time, the worse it gets. Feature flags also increase operational complexity. Managing feature flags at scale becomes difficult. How do we track which flags are on or off and where? Finally, feature flags increase testing complexity. If a flag adds new functionality, we need extra tests to ensure that everything behaves as expected when the flag is off. If a flag modifies existing functionality, we may need to run the entire test suite twice. Once with the flag on and once with it off. And if multiple flags interact, we may need combinatorial testing, which requires strong test engineering to keep the effort under control. To mitigate these drawbacks, regardless of the chosen implementation, let's look at some general design considerations. When replacing one implementation with another, like in our earlier example with serialization, a great approach is branch by abstraction, which I have covered in this video. But what if we enhance an existing feature with new functionality rather than replacing it? Instead of adding if-else conditions throughout the existing code, we should refactor the feature to be extensible. By doing so, the feature flag only needs to be checked during the composition of the application. To achieve this, we can use several design patterns. The decorator and proxy patterns are commonly used in UI frameworks to extend existing controls with additional behavior. They are also my preferred way to extend a repository implementation with caching functionality. The chain of responsibility and middleware pattern is useful for extending processing pipelines by inserting new steps. This is the pattern used in ASP.NET Core, where requests are processed through a chain of individual handlers. Another option is the observer pattern, where existing features allow other components to subscribe to events or callbacks. The new behavior reacts to these events without modifying the core feature itself. We use this pattern in one of my projects to extend the framework for creating measurements with reporting functionality. The template method pattern provides similar functionality by defining hooks in a base class that a subclass can override. This approach works well when the new behavior should eventually become part of the existing class after the flag is removed. When adding a completely new feature, the best approach is to develop it in separate modules. If the application is already modular, the only place the feature flag should exist is in the composition layer. If this is not possible, it's worth refactoring the relevant code first to improve modularity and extensibility. This approach not only keeps the application modular, but also encourages vertical slicing, which comes with a range of additional benefits. As a general rule, the design effort should match the expected lifespan of the flag. If the flag is needed for just one sprint, a few if-else conditions in the code might just be fine. If the flag is part of a larger release cycle, then applying the patterns we discussed is likely worth the effort. In whatever design you choose, always plan the flag removal. Make this part of your definition of done. Nothing adds more complexity than a growing number of long-lived feature flags. I started by claiming that feature flags enable faster feature delivery. If you are still not convinced, watch this video next.